Hello and welcome back to On The Workbench. Today we're taking a look at the brand new for 2023 Cobalt Cordless Stick Vacuum Kit. Let's take a look at what we get on the outside of the box here. First, we get up to 80 minutes of runtime. Look down right here at the very bottom corner of the box. If you can see this here, this is the combo kit that comes with a battery. Not one, but two batteries. That's fantastic. This is one of the, the few combo kits that does natively come with two batteries without an extra promotional deal. So what do we get with this? The first thing I notice here is Tangle Free Technology. Well, we'll be checking that out later to see what that means. Let's turn the box around. We've got Eliminate Pet Hair and Dander, safe on all floor types, versatile attachments. So it does come apart here. We've got a brush tool and a nice little wall dock. Very interesting. Look at the back. We've got a filtration system here that comes apart. Hopefully that looks like that might be easy to clean. Our attachments, our batteries, uh, and the like. So it looks like it comes with two two amp hour batteries. So let's see what do we get in the box. Let's get out the trusty knife and go ahead and open her up. All right, so here's what we got in the big box here. We've got manual for the battery, manual for the charger, and a manual for the vacuum. We'll put those aside for right now. Nice egg carton packaging here. Take off the top, and what do we got? We've got the tool. So the first thing I see here is we got our battery charger. Interesting that it comes with what to me is the older charger rather than the newer, higher wattage charger. Not necessarily a deal breaker, but I think it's interesting that that's still being uh, distributed. We've got the tool, we'll unwrap that in a moment here. Our vacuum extension. One battery. And then now let me take this up here. Out of the other egg carton, we've got a second battery. Attachment, attachment. And the base, we've got some mounting hardware here included. Nice mounting bracket here, our floor attachment. The brush. The metal wand, this is interesting. It looks like there's some contacts here. At continue down to the bottom. I suspect that is going to help us illuminate an LED light bar here at the bottom of the, we'll call it the regular carpet cleaning head. And now we have the actual meat and potatoes of this tool. We have the vacuum part here. Let's take a look at what we got. First of all, nice grip. This is that newer next generation grip. Nice soft touch with the hexagons on it. Very nice. Definitely a little more slender than what I thought it was going to be. I thought it might be a little thicker there, but that's okay. Uh, dust bag release. Click on that and look at that. Pops open the other end. Click shut. Open that up. Nice pivot action there. And so then I could easily just dump this out. There's a line here that says max. So you know when it gets filled up to the max, time to empty it out. Take it over your trash can and dump it out. And now for the settings here, there's a button right here on top for turbo, auto, and eco. So basically low, medium, and high. Now that turbo is obviously going to consume the most battery life and that eco is going to consume the least amount of battery life optimizing your runtime. You have to find the right balance for what's going to work for you and your cleaning needs. Battery mounts here at the bottom. Next, let's take a look at this brush. You can see it looks like a little weird. We've got this plastic here and then the bristles on the outside. First thing to know, you can take this little button here and you can slide up to have the brushes or you can click on that and retract it back. 
So depending upon your cleaning application, you can get maximum suction by getting it closer or extend the brushes to get a little more uh, scrubbing from the brushes. Press the blue button, attaches to the system, and you're good to go. Now with the floor cleaner attachment, same thing. You could go just like this if you wanted to for a compact space without the wand. Press that to remove it. Final attachment is this, what I'll call a crevice tool. Nothing fancy to it other than our one touch attachment system here. Click it on like that, no big deal. Now if we come back to this wand, so you could use this crevice tool, attach it just like that. The other cleaning tool, not a big deal. Now just for the record here, this does only go one way on the shaft here. So you have to kind of line it up, it is asymmetrical. There is a little tongue and groove slot to be able to line up. Click it right in place and you're good to go. So now let's take a look at the extension wand here. It adds effectively two feet, 10 and a half inches to your cleaning length to go with the head attachment here that is by itself here about 18 inches long. So if you put this all together, where we assemble everything, all right, then from cleaning tip to the handle, this is gonna come out to be just under four feet, which for most people, if you're holding your hand at your waist, that's a nice distance to the floor or to lift up overhead. Seems a little bit short, but it's really not that far when you actually think about it in practice. So let's take a look at the other accessory that came here. This is one that I actually think is uh, very interesting, is this wall mount rack. So you could actually mount this to the wall, perhaps in a closet somewhere, and to be able to conveniently store your entire system. So we can take our attachments and they click into place conveniently right here. And so you could even store the wand because it's the same mounting connection system. But we'll go ahead and set this up conventionally first. All right, so we got those attachments on. Put our vacuum together here with the carpet cleaning attachment. This, you see there's a little slot at the rear. You just slide this hook through there like that. And we could have this whole thing on the wall and actually mount our charger right here to this mounting plate. So a very nice touch to have a nice organized cleaning center in your cleaning closet. So the charger that comes with it if you notice, there's these two slots on the back, these little keyhole slots. We can go ahead and just slide that on. It might take just a little bit of getting it to line up just right, like that. And then our charger can mount right into this wall mounting plate as well. Very nice. I like how this all works together as a system. Nice little fold over here so you can tuck your cord away and then route your cord out and around, and there's a cord wrap and management slot here on the back. So it can come out either the left side or the right side, whatever matches with your particular configuration. Little Easter egg here, nice little hexagons on the back here to reinforce this that, max, that matches the cobalt branding. Little Easter eggs like that that are certainly there if you know where to look. Looking at the batteries that this comes with, this comes with the newer brand of batteries. It has the word Cobalt on it rather than the older Circle K logo. Out of the box, the first one here has two bars and the other one has two bars of charge. So I think the recommendation on this is that you could use it with one battery and have the other battery charging to be able to keep these in cycle as you're cleaning. 
And now once you're done cleaning, if you've used it for a bit, you've emptied out the canister, you're probably gonna to wanna to think about well, how would you actually clean this unit? Turn it sideways here, there's a little lock, an unlock padlock there. And you'll notice on the left side of the tool. So first we're gonna release this as if you're gonna empty out the filter. Then we can twist and remove this entire uh, waste assembly here. Then looking at the back, we've got a, a foam filter here. You could hand wash that. And then we've got the rest of the filtration here that we could simply rinse out to be able to rinse this clean. But we can even take it apart a little bit further than that and remove this. Now be very careful. There's this nice fine mesh here that we want to be careful that we don't damage as we're cleaning this. So you could easily rinse this and make sure you don't, again, don't damage or don't squeeze this too hard because you want to make sure you preserve that mesh. But obvious place where it could get gummed up here uh, with some debris if that gets in there, but you can easily rinse that out. And then after you got this clean and dry to reassemble, let's go ahead and uh, set this back in. You can see these two little teeth line up perfectly here. Just give it a nice little pat with your palm of your hand like that and it'll set. Replace your foam right in there. And then take this back. Remember the lid actually goes up. Look for the padlock and the little arrow. Give it a turn counterclockwise, click it up and you're good to go. All right, so now I've got a charged battery and the crevice tool attached and we're gonna go ahead and activate the vacuum for the first time here. So the first thing to pay attention to is we've got this little button here at the top, our nice little thumb control here. We can use our thumb to be able to cycle through from eco, auto and turbo. Now be careful with using that turbo on fine rugs. I think that's really small that could get sucked into the carpet attachment, especially with a hair cutting feature. You might need to be careful if your rug has tassels or something else that's fine and delicate on the end. I'm gonna start with Eco here and we'll go ahead and pull the trigger and see what happens. That's really quiet. Let's turn that up to Eco, double press. Now we'll go to turbo. All right, so that was just some quick cleaning here. Let's see if I turn it upright like this, you can see so you get that in the frame there. You can see some of the debris shows up here at the bottom. You read the dust reading here from the bottom, or really the lid, up to the max line, which is where you can see uh, the gasket there on the filter for how much volume it can actually hold. And it is starting to make just a little bit of noise as it gets some dust in it. So you know, something else I think is interesting here is this tool actually has a little more technology in it that I think that maybe meets the eye. So let's take off this battery here that at least was fully charged a few moments ago. And now I've got a battery here that's got two bars. I didn't go ahead and charge both batteries. I only charged one. Now with the other battery here, it's showing two bars. Still showing two bars on, you can see that there on camera, two bars. Now watch what happens here. If I put this on to Eco, it runs just fine. Let me go all the way up to Turbo. Did you catch that? How on turbo, it basically shut itself off automatically because there was not enough battery to sustain itself on turbo mode. So if you're not looking at the battery, that might be one quick way you can catch if it's time to recharge your battery. But there is at least some sensitivity to how well charged your battery is uh, with this tool. All right, now let's take a look at the carpet cleaner attachment here. This is what I would consider to be the sort of ordinary beater brush, if you will. And then, so it advertises this hair cutting technology. And so what we've got here are these, I don't know what you, how you want to describe them here, but there's little rollers that are designed to ensure that you don't have hair that gets tangled around your beater bar. I'm sure you may have seen that before, especially if you've got pets, children, or otherwise. And so there's these nice little grooves here that can 
uh, hopefully will help get rid of the hair while also protecting your carpet. You can see where it's kind of staggered out where you've got the center third on one side and the other thirds on the other portions there of this brush as it rolls around. Vacuum part in the rear as this spins. And this also has an LED light bar. So that tangle free technology is something that excites me. I'll show you what my current vacuum looks like and you'll understand why that excites me a lot. Uh, the other thing I should point out here is there is no height adjustment here. So this is at a fixed height. There is a switch there on the side that you can use to access this if you need to take out the bar to clean it because you need to cut anything else off or remove any other solid debris that's in there. Um, you know, every now and then you might catch a Lego or catch something else that's going to jam it up. So you can just simply do that to pull that out. So then after you got the debris out, you notice there's some contacts here, so it's going to be able to sense if this is in or not. We're going to put our beater brush in and then click it back into place. So then we should be all good and set to go. Let me pull that out one more time to point out something else here that's pretty neat, is there is this large plastic drive gear here. And so what that means is the actual drive mechanism with the belt is completely sealed off. So you shouldn't have to worry about the drive belt or issues with that getting entangled with dust because like, that's completely separated from the dust path. The other side, there's a blue cover that has a T10 security torque screw on it. If you remove that T10 security torque, you can remove this, something you probably shouldn't ever have to do. And you can see the belt here that is marked as I can read it on the side here, JG12, as, I don't know if that's the size of the belt, or it's one, let me get a better view of that, 150 JG12C. So that means something to go ahead and put in the comments down below. But otherwise, you really shouldn't have to service this because this is completely sealed and isolated from the dust pathway. Make sure you keep that really clean. And then even on this guard, there's a nice little mesh there so that it can filter and move air through, but hopefully I'll go ahead and put that back on. Would be nice if we could have a nice parts catalog for that belt as a replacement item in the event we have to service this down the road in the future. We'll reinstall the brush, reinstall the brush bar or the beater bar here. Twist that into place like that. And now we've got our vacuum attachment here ready to go to Looking at the manual, there is one page in particular to pay attention to on page two. This actually, much to my intrigue, does offer a replacement part number for the HEPA filter inside here, KSVA124-03. That's the only item with a specific replacement part number. There's no other part numbers for the other parts that are included in here, whether it's extension one, because I could easily see where you might want to buy a second or a third one of those to kind of double up that length if you've got some tall ceilings with cobwebs. Uh, that would be a great accessory for them to sell in the future, as well as replacement uh, vacuum nozzles, particularly the crevice tool and the two-in-one brush tool. Otherwise, everything else is pretty straightforward in here uh, in the manual. All right, so here's the charger that comes with it, the 45-watt charger, what to me is the older charger. But if you've got some cobalt tools or you've purchased any in the last year, year and a half or so, perhaps you might have the newer 85 watt compact charger. And so now you're gonna wonder, does that fit on the base too? Well, let's give this a shot here. Let's look at the back for a, a quick comparison. You'll see the paths for these slots on the 45 watt go vertical up and down. On the newer charger, they go at a 45 degree angle. So we'll go ahead and line this up. And then we'll push down at an angle. And indeed, the 85 watt charger does work just fine with this base. Obviously, you might wanna keep track of how much wattage you're drawing on your circuits, something to be mindful of, but if you have this, this also will fit as well. All right, so I've got the vacuum here upright. Hopefully you can see, I'm gonna turn this on in the eco mode. Nice and quiet with some light coming out there. Go up to auto. 
And then we'll turn it all the way up to eco, I'm sorry, up to turbo mode. Let's look at that from underneath. So you can see what's going on. This is still in turbo mode. The other feature you may notice on this head here is on the corners, there's a little bit of the soft rubber to hopefully minimize any marring up against you know, the edges of furniture, cabinets, toe kicks of countertops or otherwise just to hopefully minimize any issues with that. I mean, it's not gonna be perfect. You gotta be careful where you're going and obviously watch out for things like Legos or anything else you might have trapped in your carpet. So let's go take a look at this in action and we'll see why I care about that hair feature. Hopefully pretty, it'll be self-evident. All right, here has been my trusty vacuum for a while now. This is an Auric Forever Gold, I guess. I'm not sure the model number on this. I've had this too long to remember that. Or maybe it's an Auric XL looking at the tag, but in any case here, the real story of the show here is the beater bar. You can see the brushes here. My wife called me the other day and said, uh, my, the vacuum's not working. So, well, this is perfect timing with this Cobalt product coming out here. You can see I deal with this on a regular basis where I've got to get out a knife and scissors and cut all this hair off because it just eventually gums up the vacuum and causes an issue. All right, so I've got a section of my living room carpet here that we're going to use. I've dimmed the lights just to make it a little bit easier to see the illumination that we get from this tool here. We'll go ahead and I'm going to set it into auto mode and start the vacuum and we'll see what happens. We'll go ahead and turn the lights on. I don't know if you could hear that or not, but when this was set in auto mode, it did get uh, spool up just a little bit higher when it felt some resistance on the brush. And so auto mode is going to be able to detect. I suspect that's what those contacts are for on the side of the beater bar. And now let's take a look at how this is looking so far. You can see we actually do have a little bit of buildup of some hair around here. I've done a little more than what uh, I just showed you there on that last test here. But you can see it is starting to build up a little bit, but let's check this red thread right here. That should be really interesting to see. And it looks like it comes around on either side of this uh, hair cutter, for lack of a better term. I can pull that off. That side, rotate this around. See if I can get under that. That pulls off and it's not wrapped all the way around like you might otherwise think that it would be in an other, uh, in an more traditional vacuum, a little bit of hair. Now just for some context, some of this I believe is uh, and there you go, you can see some of that red thread there. Now let's look at what I vacuumed up so far out of the canister here and you can see that much hair and this is the amount of debris that I've collected out of a run around the house here right quick. I know that looks really, really bad, but this is just working really well. And my wife said it was time to vacuum the other day and uh, she wasn't kidding. So I'm glad uh, I can really show you this here because we're definitely putting this to the test to see how well it can get. We got through all of this clogged mess without it really gumming up the beater bar here very badly at the bottom. So I'm gonna take that as a big win and I'm not having to get out my scissors and cut that out. All right, I ran down the two amp hour battery and I was able to fill my entire canister that yes, it was time for a routine carpet cleaning and there's definitely some pet uh, dander from here. And when the other vacuum that you just saw uh, got a little too clogged, it started spitting some stuff back up. So this is picking up some of the debris previously picked up by the Oryx. So now let's go ahead and demonstrate how easy this is to clean. We'll open the lid here. Now I'm just gonna press the button.
Give it a few taps. It might have to reach in and help some of this debris out. Like that. Go ahead and close it up. Is it perfect? Well, no, it is obviously a used vacuum. So after uh, working through one two amp hour battery and all that debris, let's see how the other end of the vacuum looks. And you can see, yes, there are still some strings and hairs on here. I was hoping it might've been a little cleaner than this, but definitely there's nothing that's wrapped around here that's too serious that I can't just remove by hand with just a really basic hand cleaning. It does not appear I'm gonna have to cut any of this off with a knife or a pair of scissors by taking this apart to clean it. From what I can tell, I did not get any of my kids' Legos with this as well. So this is just an what I would consider an otherwise ordinary cleaning because yes, this will require some service and cleaning uh, for you to get uh, some debris out of these brushes like you would any other vacuum. So now to wrap up, this vacuum has been absolutely fantastic. It does exactly what it promises to do. It is a vacuum that has amazing suction. It works really well. A couple of the little lesser known things that I've really picked up on that I've appreciated, number one, have been the low profile head just under two and a half inches, and the rest of the shaft, the vacuum shaft, all falls within that under two and a half inch profile. The width of the head has been great for getting between chair legs and working around underneath end tables, coffee tables, and the like. And so this has really been maneuverable. No issue with that. The tangle-free technology that's advertised, well, I've not been able to manage much more than this, and I've dumped out probably close to a dozen tanks vacuuming various places around my house and other places, you know, whether it's pet hair, human hair, or otherwise, that I just can't get it to fully wrap and entangle around this. Now, obviously, it is wrapping around a little bit, but it's been to the point that I can just easily pick it out what little there's been like this with my hand with no big deal. Or if it's been any more than that, it's not hard to use the ejection button, pull the roller off, and just give it a quick cleaning, not that hard to do. There we go. So to, so to me, it's very obvious the folks that designed this really had some thoughts in mind for making this very user-friendly, for being able to maximize the trade-offs between suction, maneuverability, battery life, and the like. When I let my wife try this, one of her first comments was she thought that the top end of this was a little too heavy and thought it was a little awkward and wished that the, the battery or it would have been a little lighter weight, which I thought was interesting because one of my comments on this was I actually thought that it should include the larger four amp hour battery or two or a pair of these two amp hour batteries uh, like it comes with. And so my wife thought it was a little heavy like this and I had to remind her that, you know, it is on wheels when you're using it on the carpet. So there's obviously gonna be some trade off there between battery light, versus weight of the tool and personal preference. Your mileage may vary in that department. If you're in the Cobalt tool lineup, you know whether you need a two, a four, a six, an eight, an ultimate output or otherwise battery, you know, you've got options for how much weight you wanna hang here at the end of the tool. But obviously if you take the carpet attachment off and you switch it out to the crevice tool, you may want to ensure that you're working with that two amp hour battery. I don't think the crevice tool, you know, and a really massive eight amp hour battery is going to be very comfortable to work with. So overall, the fact that this kit comes with two batteries and this nice little uh, base here is just a really nice touch for turning this into a system. Now, what you can see here, I showed you earlier, is it does work with the slightly higher performance single battery charger. It comes with this one. Uh, use whatever charger you've got if you want to stick with this one, or if you've got this one, you can upgrade to that. That's just fine. That works too. Obviously, make sure that your outlet and your circuit can support it. And so overall, what you get for this is fantastic. The vacuum quality has been almost addicting as I've been using this for the last few days, trying to get a good handle on how well this works. And so to me, what really excites me about this is the fact that this, to me, represents a foray of Cobalt products coming out of the garage out of the yard and now into the home or RV or other spaces that maybe a battery operated tool would be perfect for you. I've got a staircase in my house that has 
uh, no power outlets nearby, and I've always got to run an extension cord to vacuum those stairs. It's kind of a pain. Having something that's battery powered is the perfect solution. The fact that it runs on the same batteries that I keep charged in the garage all the time is fantastic. I'm not trying to juggle an extra battery, an extra charger. You know, and as more of these cobalt tools start working their way into the house, we got the radio, keep an extra drill in the basement. You know, I don't always have to come out to the garage to go grab everything I need, but the system is just really migrating around the house. And the fact that we're able to put this into a more prime time tool here, if you will, I think is fantastic for what that represents. Now, I know the tool is a little bit pricey, perhaps for some coming in at uh, list price is about $300, but the last I looked, it was on sale for about $280, give or take. And obviously, Cobalt tools are known to go on sale with some quite good sales from time to time. Buy more, get more, buy more, save more sales, or whatever you got. So be on the look for various promotions where this might be tied into that. I might add, one of my favorite configurations for this tool has been like this. If I take out the extension wand and just directly attaching that carpet attachment, where then it makes it really easy for me to clean a set of carpeted stairs. Just use your imagination. There's lots of possibilities here for how you can connect the parts. Something else I've discovered is that at least some standard inch and a quarter vacuum attachments may fit, whether it's the vacuum itself like that, or into the end of the wand. Your mileage may vary on exactly which ones will fit or not. I think it would actually be great if we saw a few more accessories for this to come out, maybe a hose that, or an adapter to use the standard inch and a quarter uh, vacuum accessories. But as it stands, all the core accessories that you'd want are almost already here. But I'm gonna guess that somebody's got another accessory or two that is their favorite that's a little bit different than what comes with the kit and having a standardized adapter might open the door to a few more possibilities of using some of your existing off-the-shelf parts, especially in the event that there's ever any issue with the accessories breaking. These proprietary connections on the accessories that come with it and the head itself are not standard, and so trying to order replacement parts for these might be a little more difficult if you misplace one of these or maybe there's something else that you might want of a power brush or otherwise that doesn't exist yet, but exists with your favorite vacuum platform. The only substantive real issue I have with this, which is being nitpicky, I admit, is when I've needed to pause vacuuming because I need to move something out of the way on the floor because I need to do something to make way for the vacuum that I don't want to risk vacuuming over, well, it just doesn't stand up right. There is no way that I can stand it up like this and have it like even like this, you can see maybe it's starting to tip forward a bit. So perhaps if this head were a little bit longer, it might have a little bit more stability. Obviously that might come at the trade-off of maneuverability. And so that's the only real issue is you have to lean it up against the wall or find a way that you can lean it up against something around the handle to be able to actually stand it upright. Because otherwise, it just doesn't do it very well, if at all. Like, I can do it right now only because I've got a shelving rack up there off camera that maybe you can't see right now that it's the top of the vacuum is able to lean against. But on its own, it won't stand up. I don't know that that's a, a make it or break it for this, but at least something for you to know going into this vacuum. So a special shout out today to the folks behind the scenes at Cobalt for making today's video possible. Very much appreciate it. Thanks for watching. If you got any questions or comments, put it down below. Would love to hear about it. Thoughts or ideas, or where else you might take this to clean? Again, love to hear about it. If you liked videos like this, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Click the subscribe button if you haven't already done so. Thanks for watching, and as always, have a great day. Bye.